Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. We are incredibly excited to announce a new collaboration with Hugging Face to bring native support for the Aloha Research Kit into the Lerbot platform. This opens up endless possibilities for researchers with a streamlined and easy to use tool that makes recording data sets and training your robots for various tasks a seamless process. What's really amazing about this tool is how customizable it is. You can easily add new models, data sets, and even robots. Plus, with the built-in dataset conversion tools, you can now make almost any open dataset compatible tr for training your models. Not only that, but with the access to pre-trained datasets on Hugging Face Hub, you can tap into a whole community of researchers who have already collected data, saving you valuable time. You can also download pre-trained models to recreate experiments, helping you establish baseline results for your research without starting from scratch. In today's video, we'll walk you through the basics of using the LIRBOT tool, covering everything from setup, teleoperation, recording and replaying episodes, visualization, training and evaluation. Let's dive into it and get started. All right, let's start by setting up the environment and downloading the toolkit you will need to work with Lirabot and Aloha Research Kit. First, we'll be using Conda to create an isolated environment for all our robot toolkits and dependencies. If you haven't already installed Miniconda, go ahead and download it from the official Miniconda website. Follow the installation guide for your specific operating system to get it up and running. Once Miniconda is installed, open up your terminal or command prompt and create a new virtual environment for Lurabot by typing conda create hyphen m Lurabot python equals 3. Point. This will create a virtual environment with python 3.10 specifically for this project. After creating it, you can activate the virtual environment with Conda Activate Lirabot. Now that we have activated the environment, let's move on to cloning the Lirabot repository which contains all the code and the models we'll be working with. Navigate to your home directory and run the following commands to clone the GitHub repository. After cloning the repository, you'll need to build and install the little bot models. This step ensures everything is properly set up for working with both simulations and real-world robots. To do this, navigate to the Lirabot directory and install the packages. Since we are working with real robots, we'll also need to install the additional dependencies required for interviews and cameras and dynamic servos. These are essential for interacting with the hardware components. To install these dependencies, simply run pip install into real sense dynamicsim. This will install the necessary libraries for using interiors and cameras and dynamic cell motors, which are crucial for the Aloha kit. With that, you have successfully set up the environment and installed everything needed to get started with the Aloha kit and Lerobot. Before moving to teleoperation, we first need to configure both cameras and robotic arms. For detailed instructions, refer to the documentation provider or check out our hardware setup videos for further guidance. Once you have set up the symbolink for USB serial numbers and noted the camera serial numbers, 
head over to the config file for the Aloha kit. Located in Leerobot common slash config slash Aloha YAML. There, assign the correct serial numbers to each of the four cameras. Now that the setup is complete, let's verify it by running the teleoperation script. First, ensure that the Leerobot Conda environment is activated and the arms and cameras are connected. Next, run the control robot script in teleoperate mode, making sure to set the robot path as Aloha YAML. If everything is set up correctly, you should now be able to control the follow robot arms using the leader arms. Want to adjust the teleoperation control frequency? Use the FPS argument. You can even override parameters like USB ports for the arms with Hydra. And if you don't need cameras, simply disable them. To record the episodes, run the control robot script in the record mode. Let's go over some important arguments. The FPS is used to set the recording frequency. Root specifies the parent directory to store the data. Repo ID helps create subdirectories locally and push your dataset to Hugging Face if needed. Tags are used to organize datasets on Hugging Face Hub. The warm-up time is used to test the system for 5 seconds by default to catch any issues. Episode time is the length of each episode, defaulting to 60 seconds. The reset time is used to add a pause between two consecutive episodes for environment resetting. The number of episodes defines the total number of episodes required for the data set. While recording, you can re-record an episode if needed by pressing the left arrow key. Once you have recorded the episodes, they'll automatically upload to Hugging Face Hub unless you set Push to Hub to false. If you prefer uploading, make sure to set up the Hugging Face login. Instructions for getting an access token are available on the Hugging Face website. Now that we have collected our episodes, let's visualize them to check for any anomalies. The robot uses rerun.io to provide real-time visualizations, showing you images from all four cameras and joint states of both arms at each time step. You can visualize single episodes locally or from Hugging Face using the commands in the documentation. Now that we have verified the episodes, it's time to replay them. Use the control robot script in the replay mode to replay the episode. The arguments are similar to the record script, but you need to specify the episode index you want to replay. Now that we have collected our dataset, it's time to move on to training our model. For this demonstration, we will be using Action Chunking Transformers model to train Aloha to perform a peg insertion task. The training process begins by running the command that takes the dataset directory, which specifies the parent directory where the dataset is stored locally. But what if you are working with a dataset available on Hugging Face? Don't worry. You can simply omit this part and the dataset will be downloaded directly from Hugging Face Hub. In our case, we'll specify a repo ID argument which tells the system the repository for the dataset. The policy we are using for this training session is called Act Aloha Real, and its configurations are found in Act Aloha Real YAML file. This file allows you to tweak various training parameters like batch size, learning rate, and more. For instance, if you need to change the batch size or adjust the learning rate, you can easily make these changes by editing the YAML file. More detailed explanations about customizing your training parameters will be covered in the upcoming videos. Next, let's talk about the environment arguments. This argument helps to set the environment and specify key dimensions such as the state dimension and the action dimension. It's also used to configure a simulation environment, but since we are working with a real robot, in this case, 
we don't need to use simulation feature. However, it's always good to know that this feature exists if you need it in future. Other arguments you'll need to specify and include the output directory for trained models and the job name. Since we are using a GPU for this training session, we'll set the device argument to CUDA, which allows us to leverage GPU for faster training. We'll also disable the weights and biases visualization since we are not looking to generate training plots for this demonstration. We let the model train for a while. Once the training is complete, we can move forward to the next step. Now that the training is complete, it's time to upload our trained models or checkpoints to the Hugging Face Hub, making it accessible to others in the community. We'll be using the Hugging Face CLI tool for this, which makes it super easy to upload models. After the upload is complete, you can view the trained models directly on Hugging Face. Contributing your model to the community is not only a great way to help others, but it's also a fantastic way to speed up your own machine learning journey by accessing other pre-trained models. By uploading your models to Hugging Face Hub, you're enabling other researchers to build upon your own work and also allowing yourself to access pre-trained models for quicker results in future projects. With the training complete, let's move on to the evaluation. To start the evaluation, make sure your arms and cameras are connected to your computer and that the content environment is active. We'll be using a command similar to one used for recording episodes with one additional argument that specifies the path to your pre-trained policy. The exciting part about the script is that it does not just evaluate your models, it records each evaluation episode as a new episode which can be later used for further training. You can substitute the path with the pre-trained models from Hugging Face and quickly test other people's models as well. Once the evaluation is done, you can use the same visualization script we discussed earlier to analyze the results and visualize the newly created episodes. Before we wrap up, I want to point out that we have provided detailed documentation of troubleshooting any known issues. While this list isn't comprehensive, we recommend checking the documentation regularly for updates. If you encounter any difficulties viewing images on screen or with video encoding, we have provided clear steps to help you resolve these issues. We'll also be releasing more videos soon that dive deeper into the troubleshooting and provide more detailed explanation on these steps. That's all for today's video. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Stay tuned for more videos where we explore other aspects of working with Aloha Kits and Lerobot. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.